Hello, welcome to this demonstration of building a developer desktop with Tanzu Application Service for Kubernetes. I'm Dan Basket, Technical Marketing at VMware. Let's get started. First, we're going to install a local Kubernetes environment for development using Kind, Kubernetes, and Docker. We'll want to download a configuration file for a single node cluster. And once we have that, let's take a look at it. Not a lot in here, just some basic configuration and the ports that we're going to export to the host. Now we can do kind, create cluster, give it a name, that configuration file, and then the version of Kubernetes we'd like to deploy. And we'll speed up time a little bit because this can take a little bit to complete. Once see that completes, we can do a cluster info and get the information for the master. Now we can move on to our next step, installing Tanzu application service on the cluster. You'll need to get the actual bits for Tanzu application service for Kubernetes and some prerequisites, which I won't cover here. I'll do a quick verify to make sure my cluster is indeed empty. And then we'll run a generate values command, which will generate a values file with default values with our domain name and our certificates and passwords and such. Once that's complete, we'll take a look in the config values directory I created at that file and two other files that we need to fill out to install TAS. First, we'll look at the deployment values file. And we see the admin passwords, certificates, and other defaults. Next, we'll look at the app registry values file. This is where we store the information about our container registry and the username and password we need to access it. And lastly, we'll look at the system registry values file. And this is the registry where you download the actual containers for TAS for Kubernetes. Once those files are filled out, we'll want to set some defaults. In this case, we want to remove all the resource requirements so that we can run on a single node. And we also want to use a node port for ingress since we're on a single node. And since we're using a node port, and we'll remove one of the defaults, which is replace load balancer with cluster IP, which is typically for a vSphere environment. Once we've done that, we can run the install TAS script and pass it the config directory we just looked through. And once again, we'll speed up time a little bit because this will take a while to install on a single node. In this case I'm using the K9's interface so that you can get a graphical look when everything's running. And when everything shows up as running then you'll get a success output from the command line. And once we get success, we can set our API targets so that we can log into TAS. And then we'll log in and we'll use a command that'll grab the password out of that config values file. Then we need to enable the feature Diego Docker. Uh, that's a temporary flag we need to set for this beta release. Then we'll create orgs and spaces that we can deploy our demo workloads into. We'll target the test org test space, and then we'll push a sample application. And we'll look, and oh, looks like it's running. We'll check, yes, it's started up and it's in fact running. So, so far so good. Now we'll look at the route, we'll grab that URL and go out and see if we have a working application. And we do, success. Look, they're clapping for us. Now we can move on to the next step. We're going to install a service broker into the cluster and integrate it with Tanzu Application Service. We're going to use MiniBroker, which is an open service broker API compliant implementation.
So we'll create a namespace for a mini broker. Then we'll add the mini broker Helm repo so that we can install it. We'll update our repos and then install mini broker. Need to give it a name, uh, the actual Helm chart you want to install and the namespace where you're going to install it. And a couple other flags. I'm going to set the deploy service catalog to false since we'll be using the TAS marketplace. And the default namespace for all installs as MiniBroker. And it's installed. So we'll run kubectl and get all and look at that namespace. See what's there. We'll see the pod, the service, and an app deployment. Now we'll create a service broker inside TAS and point to the MiniBroker. Once that's complete, we can verify our service brokers. And then we can look at the service access, which will show us all the services that the broker provides. So we'll see MariaDB, MongoDB, MySQL, Postgres, and Redis. So let's enable some of these services for our TAS environment. So CF enable service access Redis. Then we'll repeat that for MongoDB. And then finally, the MariaDB service. Now if we look at the TAS marketplace with the CF marketplace command, we'll see all the services that our developers can leverage. So let's create a couple. CF create service Redis. We'll look at the version 507. We'll call it Redis service. Then we'll also create a MariaDB service. Same command, but we'll also add a parameter to create a default database for us. We'll call that my database. You can then see if the services have created. Uh, the Redis has succeeded. MariaDB is in process. We can take a look at the pods. And we see the Redis is almost all the way up. MariaDB is not yet up. Let's take a look at the services in that same namespace. So that's how we'll connect. And we'll see cluster IPs. And each of those has a service. Now if we look at the pods again, everything's running. So the next step is to test our MariaDB service to make sure it works before we move any further. So back into K9s, we'll take a look and edit the service. We want to change from cluster IP to node port so that we can forward the port and access it from our host. We'll save that. Go back to the command line. And take a look at the pods in the mini broker namespace. So we need the name of the MariaDB pod. And we will forward the port from that pod, the default uh, MySQL port 3306. We use the same port on the host. And run that in the background. And now we want to try to log into the MySQL service. So we need to create a service key so we can get the credentials. We'll create the service key and then we can view it. And these are the credentials when you bind to the database that it passes. So we'll use these in the MySQL command line to connect to that service. So give it the root password. And if we look in MySQL show database, we'll see the my underscore database that we created when we set up the service. So now we can move to our final step. Configure and push our application and bind it to the MariaDB service. Binding with the service broker is one of the interesting features of Tanzu Application Service because it lets the developer use the database without having to know the credentials, the database name, or any of the details about it. He just needs to connect to the service and the credentials are passed to his application and it can consume them from there. So we'll go into the directory for our application. It's got two parts, a UI and a backend service. We can take a look at the manifest. The manifest is what tells Tanzu Application Service how to run the app. 
So we have a name, the route we want to access, and the Docker image that it's going to load into the application service. So let's build that Docker image. So we'll build the app and push it to the repository that we specified early in the process. So once that's pushed, we can do a CF push and push the application into Tanzu application service and it's running. So let's test out the UI and it works, but we see an error that it failed to load. That's because it's not connected to the back end service. So let's go take care of that. So we'll look at the manifest for the backend service. It's a little different. The route is an endpoint behind the same URL as our UI service. And you'll see we're bound to the MariaDB service that we created earlier. This will allow it to get the credentials and make all the database access connections it needs. So we'll CF push. And one nice thing about the new Tansu application service for Kubernetes is, in the past we've always had to push compiled images. But now since we've integrated the Tanzu build service, we can actually push just the source code and it'll build the source code and then build the container that it needs to run the application service. So we sped it up a little bit. It's going through the process of building the source code. We'll call that staging. And once that's done, then we can move on to the next step. And that'll be building the container image. So that's built and now we're running the service. And we can check the apps. Yes, and indeed it is running. We can look in MySQL and go back to our database. We see we have a to-do database now that has a schema. So it actually created a schema for us. Check our routes. Those are correct. We'll check the environment variables. These are the service variables that are past the application. And you'll notice that the VCAP services are the same variables that were used in the service key that I logged into MySQL with. So now we go back to the app, reload it, and now it appears to be working. We can add a to-do, which is record a video about Taz for Kate's. That looks good. Now if we drop back to the MySQL interface, we can do a quick query. Just select star from our to-do table, and there it is. So we successfully connected the UI to the service to the database. And that's it. If you have any questions, you can take a look at these docs and download the beta yourself and get started.